is going to be in regards to carbon arc cutting. You guys haven't done any carbon arc cutting uh, yet. You know, it's considered the fact that you, know, you guys are uh, first years. Uh, so essentially the, the definition of carbon arc cutting, it is actually the complete opposite of stick welding. So stick welding, we take the filler metal uh, from the rod, we put it onto the plate, we melt it to the plate, okay? Carbon arc cutting is exactly the opposite. So instead of putting weld onto the plate, you guys are actually taking whatever is in front of it off. Um, so a lot of times that uh, they use, one of the reasons they use carbon arc cutting, so let's use uh, maybe like a backbone or an excavator or something um, you know, that's really heavy and really thick metal, uh, we'll use that for an example. That might have uh, like two or three inch um, metal thick wise, right? What happens if you get a crack? You can't just throw a single weld right over top of that and expect it to work, right? You're gonna to need to grind down that two or three inches to get all the way down to the base. That way you can fill it up with weld, just like doing me, okay? If you do that with a grinder, or even a torch or a plasma torch, you're gonna to be there for hours cutting that down. So you're gonna use your, your carbon arc and that's going to effectively and accurately take all of that molten metal, crack metal, old weld, whatever it may be, and it's going to get rid of it, okay? Some of the things that you're going to need in order to complete your carbon arc cutting. First off, you need your power source, okay? Now, Typically, you're going to use a power source that has a carbon arc capabilities. Um, so like if you go to Harbor Freight and buy a little stick welder, it's not gonna work, okay? You're not gonna be able to uh, carbon arc with that for the simple fact of your duty cycle. You know, you're, you're not gonna be able to get the amperage that you need in order to you know, establish your, your cutting process going on, okay? So you need a, a, a welding machine that is capable of producing that high amperage, okay, with a nice, uh, good duty cycle, okay? So that's the first thing. Second thing you need is an air source. Our air compressor is on the other side, so we need to have an air compressor, okay? So if we do this out in the field, you know, obviously you can use the generator welder, you know, if it's capable, which usually it is, and then, you know, they would have the, the portable air compressors, you know, the ones that run off of, of gasoline. Uh, so that would be the air compressor that you would use. You need both of those in order to be able to carbon, okay? So plasma cutting, for instance, is the, la uh, the, the hottest process that we deal with, okay? Plasma cutting is burning between 30 and 43,000 degrees, right? Carbon arc, not burning as hot as plasma arc cutting, but it's burning between 20 and 30,000 degrees, okay? So it's still very, very hot, but the difference between plasma and carbon arc is the sound, okay? Plasma is a little bit noisy, but carbon arc you, it is required to have earplugs. You know, your, your brain drums can explode at 160 decibels, okay? Carbon arc, you know, some of the, the carbon arcs, they run at about 120 decibels. So it's very, very loud with, with the carbon arc. That's why I told you guys to bring in earplugs. If you don't have any, we have some. So when we actually do um, the carbon arc process, we're going to make sure that everybody has earplugs in um, because it's very dangerous. Um, so, carbon arc runs off of a constant current power source. So going back to our different power sources, we know that stick welding and TIG welding both operate off of a constant current welding power source. Gas metal arc welding, flux core arc welding, both operate off of a constant voltage power source, right? Okay? With carbon arc cutting, your constant current power source is your main source to use, but you can use a constant voltage power source. You're, you're running at such high amperage that the difference between the slightly sloping volt amper curve and the steep volt amper curve is very minimal with that high of amperage. Does that make sense? There's something going on out there that's more important than me. I guess. Yeah. No, I don't have anything. Uh, so, when it comes to machines, if you have constant current or constant voltage, running the highest amperage doesn't necessarily matter, but your first option is always going to be the constant current, okay? Now, this operates off a direct current electric positive or reverse polarity, okay? You can also operate this off of uh, AC 
uh, given, given the, the certain uh, electrons. Okay? So main wave operated off direct current electroposit, which is also uh, reverse polarity. Okay? Now, let's get into the air pressure. Okay? So I know that that air compressor is sending out about 170 pounds of pressure. Okay? Anybody know what the operating pressure is for carbon? You guys just did this assignment the other day. Anybody know what those pressures are? Not 160. 60, 60. You're close. 80 to 100. 80 to 100. So in order for me to get that 175 pounds down to 80 pounds, I need a regulator. Okay. So first thing you're going, unless you're, you're setting it at your air compressor itself, which that one is not. It's just setting the shot off at 175 pounds. This is called a piggyback regulator. So what you can do with this regulator, you can attach your inlet in here, you can connect your lead to it on the other end, and we can regulate the pressure, okay? So we're gonna be running between 80 and 100 pounds, okay? Now, 80 to 90 is, is a better range. The only time you really wanna to get to 100 is if you're like really good, you can do things a lot faster, okay? Uh, but you guys aren't that good yet. So 80 to 85 amps is, is a perfectly good range, okay? So we have our piggyback regulator. Next thing that we have, this is our arc air carbon arc lead. Okay? Now, with this lead in particular, there are two different connections that need to happen. Okay? First thing, this is where we're going to connect our air hose. Okay? Connect our air hose directly to the piggyback regulator, and we're going to set it between 80 and 100 pounds. And then the second thing is our lead. Okay, so now, since this doesn't have a dense connector on the end of it, all you guys have to do is connect your electrode holder into your positive terminal, and then we will actually take this, and we will just connect it right to the flat end. Okay, that's how you're going to just jump right through it. And this is perfectly fine. It's not going to shock you, it's not going to do anything wrong, but it's kind of what it's made. Okay, and you could also, if you just want to use this, you can also just attach your, um, your ground clamp to it, okay? So we need our ground clamp connected to our table. But So for us, for our, in the instance, we're gonna use this cutting table, so we don't need to connect it directly to the metal, uh, a piece that we're gonna be cutting because this whole table is entrance. So we'll connect the ground clamp here, and then our stuff will be right on the table, okay? Now, another thing that you're going to need, now for us, I have brought the welder out of this booth here, okay? Um, and if you were doing this somewhere else, you'd want to make sure that you're blowing all of this old metal not across the shop. So we wouldn't start here and blow it this way because there's a lot of old metal that's going to be traveling across the shop. So what we did, brought this over, so there's nothing in the booth, okay? We're going to be taking all that old metal and we're going to be blowing into the booth. Now, if you don't have a booth, or say like a drown, uh, down draft table or something, we would then go grab the, the six by six screen and set that up to wherever we're gonna be found. Make sense? Okay, so uh, let's talk, talk a little bit about safety for that, okay? Definitely need our boots, right? I mean, think about it, this is molten metal that we're dealing with. So we need our boots, we need to make sure that our pants are on the outside of our boot because you get molten metal that falls on your foot, it's, it's going to burn quite, uh, quite a bit. I don't know if you guys have experienced that with welding sparks or not yet, but these are a lot bigger than welding sparks themselves. So we need our, our boots, we need our pants with no holes into them. We're going to need our welding jacket, uh, and then we're going to need our safety glasses, we're going to need our welding hood. You don't want to carbon arc just by looking at it. You know, your, your safety glasses are going to protect your eyes you know, from things hitting them, but once, once you start carbon arc cutting, that's a very bright light, okay? Brighter than plasma. It's almost like looking at a welding bar, okay? Um, it's actually uh, brighter than looking at a welding bar. So typically, when you're welding, you're going to use a, like a shape 9 or 10 uh, on your, your hood. When you guys are doing carbon arc cutting, you're actually going to take your hood and switch it to a shape 13. Okay, so you want to darken that as far as you can because that light is so bright. Trust me, you guys will be able to see that. Uh, it's still going to be very difficult. Okay, so we're going to need our hoods with, with as, as dark of a shade as we can get. No 
okay? We need to make sure that we have our gloves, okay? Uh, gloves to protect our hands. And preferably, if you have stick welding gloves and big welding gloves, we would want to use the stick welding gloves because they're thicker, they'll be able to handle a lot more heat. But if you don't have them, big welding gloves are okay. It's just that you're not going to have, uh, you know, as much heat uh, reduction between the gloves, okay? Um, now, the next thing that we have here, I want to pass these around, okay? These are called carbon electrodes. All right? These are copper coated. There's a couple of different types, right? There is just plain graphite carbon electrodes, and there's copper coated carbon electrodes. The plain graphite ones, you know, they can be rounded, they can be triangles, they can be flat. It would be for different carbon crosses. Okay. They, they also make those in the copper coated, but the difference between the copper coated and the plain graphite, the copper coated allows for better arc start, okay, uh, more stability in those, okay, and they're more expensive, okay, so they give you a better overall performance with these. Now, if you take these and drop them on the floor, guess what? It's going to break, okay? These are very brittle. Uh, this morning, when uh, the morning class was moving some stuff, I had to make sure that they were throwing these boxes. They had to set them down because these, these are very brittle. You know, all it is, it's a bunch of carbon that's in there, okay? So you have to make sure that you're very careful anytime you're using these. Now, this can still be used, even though that end broke off, but we're gonna grab this other one just to, to show you guys. Uh, this is not where it connects into your lead itself, okay? When you find these copper coated uh, electrodes like this, you're going to use this to start, okay? If you guys remember from one of your assignments the other day, does anybody remember what that stick out is from the end of your electrode to your torch itself? Anybody remember? We're going to be at a, a maximum of six inches. Well, we can be more than that, but uh, for what you guys are doing, it would be a maximum of six inches. So that means when I take my carbon arc right here, okay, when I put this in, we're going to have our bare spot at the end here, okay, and we're going to be at six inches. Now, say if we were doing like something like uh, aluminum, if you were to carbon aluminum, because you can do carbon arc on everything. Aluminum, cast, stainless steels, mild steels, okay? So if, say if we were to do this on aluminum, we would take that six inches and we would take it to about a four inch stick out, okay? Now, your molten metal that blows out is going, the, the quality of, of how it's getting rid is going to depend on the stick out. So if you have it all the way back here, you know, your, your air orifices, you know, what actually blows the molten metal out is at the bottom of your uh, carbon electrode. So if you're at 12 inches away, that air orifice isn't going to blow that out as effectively as it would be from six inches away. Does that make sense? Okay, so we want to be about six inches away and at all times. So, you know, when this is a consumable electrode, so when it, when it goes, you know, it's going to go down, not very fast. So whenever you stop, you want to take it and you want to get a little bit more meat back on, right? Make sense? Okay. So now that we know a little bit about those carbon electrodes, we're going to go through and we're going to set up the machine, okay? So first thing I want to do when setting up this machine, I'm going to need to just to, since we're going to be running at high amperage, we're going to disconnect this remote that runs to the big one. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, everything that's in the orange means that the electrode is hot. Okay. So if it's in the white, mig welding, for instance, when you guys touch that on the table, nothing happens until you squeeze the trigger, right? So that's what activates that. When it's everything's in the red, it means as soon as you touch it, you, there's no trigger to squeeze or anything. As soon as you touch it to the metal, it's hot all the time, okay? So, with these machines in particular, we're gonna take it and we're going to turn it over to stick welding, okay? 
So if, if you don't have a carbon mark setting on your machine, you want to turn it to your stick set on your machine. Make sense? Okay, so we're going to set it on our stick set, and then we're going to turn our machine on. It's going to take a second to turn it on here. <clears throat> now, the next thing we want to do is we want to adjust our amperage. Okay, so we have two sizes of carbon electrodes here. We have 3 16 and then we have a quarter of an inch. Now, there are 1 16th electrodes, there are uh, 5 16 or 3 8 electrodes, and a whole bunch of different size electrodes, but the most common are going to be the 3 16 and quarter inch. So say if you were to be using a 3 16 carbon arc electrode, our amperage, a nice rule of thumb is, is for every 16th of an inch, you want to have a maximum of 100 amps, okay? So, if we're using 3 16 that's a maximum, okay? So if we're using a 3 16 carbon electrode, we want to be in a range between 150 and 200 amps, okay? <coughs> if we're using a quarter inch electrode, our range is going to be between 200 amps and 400 amps, okay? You guys will probably be closer to like the 225, 250 range using the quarter inch electrode and you're going to be closer to maybe the, the 175 range using the, uh, uh, the 316, okay? So, uh, let's see, which one do we have open here? 316, we'll, we'll, we'll take this, and we're gonna go to about 175, roughly, we'll do 180, okay? So about 180 amps, now if this was the quarter inch electrode, we would go over 200 amps, okay? Now this machine is a good machine, and our duty cycle at 180 amps is already 100 percent so we can you know we can carbon mark all day now if we were to go to like 400 amps you know our duty cycle is probably only going to be you know two minutes or, or, or so okay so very good machine okay now the next thing we're going to do <coughs> connect our leads here okay ground goes where the positive or the negative right now this, we can just keep it out of the way, stick it right down there on the bottom. Because remember, this is all connected, okay? So and anywhere I touch it on here, there's going to be all part, okay? Second thing we're going to do is connect our positive terminal, okay? Connect this in here. Now there are some carbon arc leads where you can just connect your, uh, you know, the, the dense connector right here. But for this one in particular, you'll need to, okay? So now, this is hot. That means if I touch this off of the cable, it's gonna arc, okay? That's what we're doing, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our air hose, okay? Grab our air hose, we're going to attach our piggyback regulator. Alright, now right now we're sitting at 130 amps. So we need to take this and we're going to turn it down and reduce our pressure. We don't 130 amps, 130 pounds. So we don't need all that pressure. So we're going to go down to about 80 amps. 80 pounds, my goodness. I don't know why I keep saying that. So right there is about 82 pounds. Okay, you guys see that? Okay, we're sitting on about 82 pounds. Yeah. So, once we're done, we push that down. Because that will keep us locked in place. Okay? Can't do it. Alright? Now, take this, and we're going to connect it right here to the end. Now, if you guys have not operated a quick connect before, these, you're just going to pull back, push it on. That's how it stays connected. Okay? I'm going to leave this disconnected until we actually start because, as you can hear, it, it bleeds off air. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you guys the next thing. Okay, after you put your electrode in, it's very crucial that you do not try and cut without turning your air pressure on. Okay? Because if you don't, all you're going to do is you're going to stick your, your electrode right to the metal, nothing's going to happen. Okay? You guys see this thing right here? So the knob, okay, 
you're going to push the knob all the way in, and that's what's going to turn your air pressure on. Okay? Now you see our air orifices here? This adjusts. Okay? So we can take this, if I wanted to cut, you know, just like stick ball. If I wanted to cut with it straight ahead, I could. Okay? Now I'm going to squeeze this in a little bit. If I wanted to use like a 45 degree angle, because I'm more comfortable that way, to leave some pressure off there, then we can move. Make sense? Okay? So for me, I might have like a, a 30 or so degree angle. That way, I know that I'm far enough out of the way. If it's closer to me, guess what? That's more heat that's going to be blown on to me, right? Now, another thing that you guys have to remember, okay? When we carbon our cut, the air orifices, you see how they're on the top right now? Always have to be on the underneath side. So you don't want to hold it like this to try to blow that molten metal out, because the air is going to be blown on top of the molten metal, and nothing's going to happen, okay? We need to make sure that our air orifices are on the bottom of our leaves here. Okay? And then, like I said, I'm not going to plug that in until we actually get going when you guys get your hoods and everything on. Okay? So then we have our air orifice that we're going to turn on and off. Okay? You guys have to get in the habit of turning this on before you try and strike your car. We you actually go to carbon arc cut. Okay? It's unlike stick welding. Stick welding, you know, you're going to sit there, you're going to tap it to, to start your arc. With this, all you have to do is get close, and then as soon as you touch that to the metal, it's going to start to blow out. Okay? Now let's talk about rod angle. Okay? Typically, you want to have about a 45 degree rod angle. Okay? If you want to have more penetration, so burn deeper into the metal, you want to take that 45 degree angle and move it up to maybe a 60 or 70 degree. If you want just to remove the well from the surface, you don't want to run necessarily dig into the metal itself, <clears throat> you're going to drop down to like maybe a 30 degree angle, okay? So based on where this is, is going to be how much penetration you get into uh, the, the metal itself, okay? So we can do a bunch of different things. We can do what's called gouging, okay? We can do what's called washing. So say if we had, uh, a lot of times people would do a washing, like maybe a V group with a that vacuum strip needs to come off before you do any type of bend test. So you can wash that off. One inch wide, if you're cutting out with a grinder and a cutoff wheel, you know, it's going to take you a long time to, to get rid of that. But if you just set it up here, drop your angle down, and you can wash it off like this, you'll be off to no time. Okay? And then the other thing that we have is uh, so we have gouging, we have washing, and then uh, we also have like, beveling. Do a bevel too. So, say if I wanted to put a bevel on the outside here, I would angle it to, to bevel. Now, all of these will require a clean, especially on, say, like stainless steel or aluminum or something, because you're putting carbon into the things, okay? Even with steel, you don't want carbon into steel, right? Why? Because carbon is what's going to pull those impurities, right? So, anytime you do any type of carbon or cutting, you can't just cut it and then throw a weld over it. It has to be grinded, that carbon has to be removed out of there, and it has to be cleaned with the grinder before you go apart. But even cutting this and then cleaning up with a grinder and then welding it is still faster than trying to you know, use a grinder to, to grind it off. Well, let's, let's take that, uh, that bracket that I was grinding on the other day. You guys remember me grinding on that bracket? Okay, it took me probably 20 minutes to grind, you know, six inches off of maybe half inch thick stuff, okay? I didn't want to spiral the carbon arc, because I think you guys weren't ready for that yet, but if I would have done this, I mean, I could have carbon arced it off in, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, and then hit it real quick with the grinder, and it'd be done in five minutes, okay? Or even less, less than five minutes, okay? So, <clears throat> now this is old, and we do have a new one, but this one still works. It's just the insulation around it, is just not all the way there. You like to drop it on the ground, and what you don't want to do is set it on the table because the insulation is out. So you can set it on this table because there's no, there's no ground connected to it. Okay? So, next thing we're going to do, I have a 
just a piece of welded plate here that it was in the trash. And I think this was from uh, the CCBC crew because I pulled it out of the dumpster, which is pretty good gloves. Um, and I, I have this x block So remember, the x blocks that you guys are currently working on, this is going to be the next step to those x blocks So once you finish that flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead with those x blocks build those all the way up, we're going to cut it. Okay, we're going to do a cut edge test to see how, how good the penetration we have. And then we're going to take the rest of that and we're going to card press it back out. Okay, this is almost like a simulation to a, a, uh, like a repair well. So say if this was cracked here, uh, or if we needed to re-weld that, we would back down to that, we would remove all that and put new welds on that. Okay? So ideally, when you guys are done, that X block is going to look back like the X block, except not being welded. Makes sense, right? Okay, we ready to get started with this? All right, so you guys need to uh, get your hoods, get your earplugs in. And I'm not going to be able to do much talking with earplugs in. Number one, you guys are going to hear me. And number two, it's going to be uh, a little bit longer to, to be able to hear. So let's get our earplugs in, get your hoods, make sure your hoods are set on a piece of shape 13. And then uh, I want you guys to gather kind of on this side, but not in front of the camera. Now on this side, we're going to be able to see. Okay, I'm going to try to off this tank here so we don't gouge it away. He's not on there, so you guys can stay in front of the camera. So we're going to take our shake 13. Now, uh, you guys, since you have these earplugs in, I'm not going to talk because you're not going to be able to hear me anyway. Uh, but I'm going to go through a couple of things. Now, you don't want to push it into the metal. Okay? Does that make sense? It's not like stick welding where you want to push it into the metal. You almost want to hover right at the, the, the molten liquid portion of it. Okay? Because when you try to stick it in that metal, it's going to stick. And then if you break off that carbon electrode inside this metal, you're not going to be able to wash it back out. You're going to have to go around it. Okay? So that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to break that off. Make sense? So we're going to connect this. So we're going to put the bare end in first, okay, six inch stick out, you want to make sure that you're always blowing to something that's not going to catch on fire, okay, because you guys are going to see that it's going to be blowing a lot of sparks. Has anybody seen carbon arc before? No videos or anything? Okay. So, you guys can get a little bit closer here. Get up here where you can see. Come on up here, Lynn. So, first thing you want to do, get comfortable. So me, I'm going to use this. I'm going to drag my arm right along there. You don't necessarily want to be here, because you're not going to be able to drag your hand or anything. Okay? So I'm going to use this. Okay? Just a little bit. And then we're going to be just like this. Alright? Now, whenever we start to practice, we'll draw some lines for you guys to, to practice on some lines. But for now, just for learning purposes, we're not going to do that. Okay? Air on. Put it down. See how we didn't really lose too much? Okay, so you can do a lot of carbon arcing with one electrode. Grab me that uh, hammer there. So this is just a simple 
a simple gouge. Now, we're going to have all this fabric. Now you're going to get a lot of that popping going on until you get a nice rhythm. It's not going to be perfect the whole time. Make sense? So it's going to get a lot of popping and stuff. As long as you keep that from sticking in there, okay, that's all that, that matters. We're going to go again here. Ready? If you can't see back here, get up a little closer where you guys can see what's going on. Okay, see how we've taken a bunch of this? Now this is the part where it would get Somebody did a uh oh. You see the frosting in there? So, even though this looks good on top, you can see what it looked like underneath. So, whoever this was, if that was to be cut and bent, they would have failed. You can see all that frosting in there? What's nice about carbon arc is that it is still good. Up. So, this is where you can pop this stuff off. See how we were, we were taking that metal away? How we're taking the metal away? Okay, let's do a little bit more. And I'll let you guys go ahead and play with this, alright? If you try to go too far down with this, it's going, it's not going to blow through everything. Make sense? So if you go down too far, it's not going to blow all that out. 